Yolande Makolo, and I asked her whether Rwanda would take every single asylum seeker they're asked to by Britain. There is no limit on numbers for the duration of this partnership, which is meant to be five years. So we are working together to uh, to welcome and, and, and host those who are relocated here. Because as I understand it, the Rwandan facility that we've been talking about previously certainly can, pr- can have 100 people living there all at once. Is that right? That is not right. Uh, there was a misinformation that was put out months ago. We have corrected that misinformation. Indeed, there is one facility that can take 200 people, but there are many facilities that we are in discussion with and that we will uh, engage as soon as we know what numbers are coming and when they're coming. Because if we're talking about hundreds there, the number of people waiting for a decision, the number of asylum seekers waiting for a decision in Britain is 136,779. That is an enormous number. Are you seriously suggesting Rwanda would take that kind of number? I don't have a a final number uh, for now, but we are prepared to take uh, uh, thousands over the duration of this partnership. Um, And although money was not part of today's treaty, both sides have said that, it has been reported in the UK that the British government will be paying Rwanda a certain fee for everybody who gets settled status inside Rwanda and then stays there. Do you have any information as to whether that is true? This is why it's called the Migration and Economic Development Partnership. Funds are being invested to ensure that those who are relocated to Rwanda are able to, we are able to take care of them properly. Uh, additional funds are also being invested into Rwanda's economic development so that we can continue to do what we're doing to raise the standard of living of this country um, so that Rwanda is able to benefit as well as the migrants and refugees who come to live with us. So there will be a payment. I'm just wondering, is it per head? There are some calculations that have uh, that are being discussed that have been discussed since last year uh, to ensure that everyone who comes here is properly taken care of. And do you know? Have, have you any idea what kind of sum per head the British government's talking about? No, I'm not able to uh, speak to that. Um, uh, so far, there's been no agreement. So this is something that is still being discussed between the two governments. Am I right? Well, th- there are detailed. Uh, agreements and documents that have been put together uh, as regards uh, how this partnership will be resourced. And uh, colleagues in uh, in Kigali and in London have been working this out. Um, Now, as you know, the big issue in in British politics has been whether Rwanda is genuinely a safe country for such people. Um, There's been a whole series of reports, and I've been sitting here this afternoon reading them from Human Rights Watch, from Amnesty International, and indeed the American government. Are you saying that all these reports are misinformation? They're all a libel on the government of Rwanda? Well, what what I can say is that Rwanda has come a long way in the last 30 years since the genocide against the Tutsis. We have done a lot of hard work to 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 rebuild this country in every aspect, including our judicial system, which was shattered uh, during the genocide, which we have rebuilt. Uh, The fact that countries like the US, uh, the UK, uh, uh, not the UK, the the US, the Scandinavia, uh, the Netherlands, uh, Canada have sent people uh, to be tried in our uh, judicial, in our courts here, shows that we have done really uh, tremendous uh, work in rebuilding our institutions. Um, We are proud of what we have done, what we have achieved. Where we disagree with countries, uh, our partner countries, we're open to discussing where there's been misinformation or misunderstanding about the way they understand the way the things that we we do. Otherwise, we are satisfied that we've done a great job. Rwandans have an elevated trust of uh, level of trust with the government. We're able to work with Rwandans on many, many uh, programs. And this is why this country has been able to to move forward. Why do you think uh, Rwanda was chosen by the British government in the first place? Well, we decided to get into this partnership with the UK. Uh, we are partners in this. We, we did this because we have a long tradition of welcoming and hosting refugees and migrants in this country. A lot of people who live in Rwanda were refugees themselves or displaced at some point because of the nature of our history, of our recent history. People in this country were either displaced within the country or had to flee to nearby countries and further afield. Most of them are back in the country. So we understand. We understand uh, the situation of people who have to leave their homes at a drop of a hat and and that precarious uh, life that they they live. And this is why Rwandans are are so welcoming to migrants and refugees. We have over 130,000 who live here with us. Why do you think the British government regards the possibility of being sent to Rwanda as a serious deterrent to people if if it's all going so well? 
Oh, we we who live in Rwanda do not consider it a punishment to live here. We think this is a good country. We're working to make it even better. Um, and um, I, I think the perception that there's something wrong with living in Rwanda comes from um, from uh, the way Africa is considered, even in the media, perhaps. Um, but for but us, you, uh, it's a good thing to live in Rwanda. I'm sorry, you, you understand my point. It, it is a bit odd if the British government is doing this to stop people even thinking of trying to come to Britain because the possibility of being sent to Rwanda is so terrible. And yet at the same time, they're saying Rwanda is a very, very well-run country with whom we have a, a good relationship. It can't be both things, can it? What I know is why we're doing this, um, Andrew. Uh, I think it's a fact that irregular migration is a global crisis. What other solutions are there are people bringing out to, to, to resolve this crisis? People are making da- dangerous journeys for mainly two reasons. Number one is conflict. There's serious conflicts happening around the world. Number two, people are looking for economic opportunity. And there is an imbalance in opportunity between the North and the South. This is why people are flowing North. If we're able to invest, make the right investments in countries like Rwanda for us to develop even faster economically and have people live here and maximize the opportunities that, that they get, then we get to the root causes of irregular migration. As an African country, uh, Rwanda does not want to lose uh, young people to the desert desert or to the sea, Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea, in these desperate, uh, dangerous journeys. And we are also in agreement with the UK government that we should not uh, allow criminal human smugglers to enrich themselves from the ordeals of, of people. You, who are you, making these- you want Rwanda to be a magnet. Um, And at the moment, the British government sees it as a deterrent. And my point is simply, you can't be both a magnet and a deterrent. Rwanda is already a magnet. We're hosting a whole school of Afghani girls that moved here when Kabul fell. Mm. We're working with a UNHCR to bring migrants that were stuck in Libya when the war started out. We've brought, we've evacuated together with the UNHCR almost 2,000 since 2019. More recently, we've had more than 200 Sudanese medical students who have come to finish their studies here when war broke out in their country. So Rwanda is already a magnet. We consider ourselves a, a country of migration. We have lots of African students studying at our uh, at our universities. We have an open visa policy. Africans and people from common, Commonwealth countries can come to Rwanda without a visa uh, and from the Francophonie. So we have a very open migration policy and we believe in the benefits that come with the regular migration so i'm uh, you you must yourself have read uh, the u.s government report and the human watch rights report which says rwandan authorities and their proxies are using violence judicial mechanisms and intimidation to try to silence criticism from rwandans living around the world and we've had um, you know records and accounts by rwandans in the uk who feel that they are being persecuted or followed or intimidated by the regime do you think those kind of criticisms are essentially racist we just reject the premise of this whole question. Every time I'm interviewed by a, a British journalist, they throw a Human Rights Watch or a, a State Department report at me. What we know is that we're doing our best to make this country work, and it's working. Rwanda works, and we're doing the best for our people. What we have in Rwanda is a country that functions well. What we do not uh, have, in, what we will not accept in Rwanda is anyone breaking the law. We are, all of us, liable to the law, including officials of this country. Um, So if you break the law, then you're liable to the law. That does not make you uh, oppressed or an opposition politician just because you've rubbed up against the law. And yet the the outlook, uh, the prospect for opposition politicians in Rwanda, you would have to admit, is not very good. Well, that's up to them. It's not my job. It's not a job as government to to uh, to promote opposition politicians. If they have an alternative policy or politics to propose to Rwandans, they should do so, but within the law. But it's not your job. But you are you are speaking for the government here. And opposition politicians have been imprisoned shortly before elections. Or opposition politicians have been silenced. This is described by Human Rights Watch. I'm sorry, I'm going to mention them again as a closed political system. Which opposition politician are you talking about? I don't have the list here, but it's the, they're all listed in the Human Rights Watch report, which I can read out to you if you want to. Well, you shouldn't be making any generalization. If anyone was uh, arrested or tried, there must have been a reason. In any case, 
Rwanda has made tremendous progress in every aspect, in every sector, including in uh, rule of law, including in justice. We, our, our politics is the reason this country works. Um, we have made some economic progress, but this is a country that was completely devastated in 1994. This is a country that was never expected to rise. And we have. Next year, we will be commemorating 30 years since the genocide. But we are at a, at a point now where we're able to partner with the UK on an innovative and bold solution to a global problem. This is something to, we do often on other issues as well with other countries. There are some organizations that do not agree with us. That's up to them. I, all he I'm saying, I, I, I don't, I don't uh, dissent at all that you have made huge progress as a country, and I know all about the genocide, and it was an appalling and dark phase in, in that, the history of that part of the world. My point is that you have effectively a one-party system which represses opposition politicians and pursues its, its enemies around the world. And that is a very different system from the United Kingdom. We're trying to ask whether this is a good country to be sending people to, and I think these are fair questions. Sure. Why should we have the same system as the as the United Kingdom? We don't have the same context. We don't have we don't have the same history. We have a system that works for us. We do not have to copy your system with all the deficiencies that it has. You have your own problems to to, to work on. Everybody's got, their problem. everybody's, Every, got their problems. everybody's got their problems. Everybody's got their problems. Yeah. Are we working on our challenges? We're trying to build a system that works for the majority of Rwanda. And so far, so good. Very interesting. Okay, Yolande Makolo, thank you very much indeed for talking to LBC tonight.